Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Look at the dewdrops in there. Isn't that fun? It's a growth in there. Okay, all right. Okay, Turbo. Spatial awareness. Not so great lately. You keep stepping on my feet. Stop it. Oh, hi, pumpkin. This is a nice change. I take out the camera and you show up and want to be around. Usually she gets annoyed and runs away. She doesn't like when I talk to the camera. It's been very, very affectionate today. You said you're sweetheart. Okay. I hear you. I know you want outside. You always want outside. Okay. Good stretches. Nice stretches. Good stretches. Whiny. Oh, you too, Toby? Come on. Let's go outside. Let's go outside. Come on. Come on, Toby. Toby. Come on. Let's go outside. Come on. Good boy, Toby. Sweetheart. Love my Toby. Oh, you see this? It's not going to show that well. It's Cousin Lou was over yesterday and there's... there's mud everywhere everywhere even up here look at that how did they do that okay well, that was like the worst intro ever i just said hi and started to get on with things so this week what i'm going to be working on is well all of this it's just a mess need to get this cleaned up get all the debris pulled out have some pots i need to reorganize the biggest thing i want to do though is get the clutter out from back here and I would like to start a hedge in this spot. I've talked about it for years, privacy. I just, I don't like being able to see through there. And I have some plants that y'all don't get to see very often. They're hidden behind the skip whorls down here on the other end. So you, they're basically invisible <laughs> unless I walk around over there, which I don't do very often on the opposite side of that hedge. So I'm going to attempt to transplant the things that are, you'll see. We'll go over all that when I do it. But first I wanna go up there, get this stuff out, dig some test holes, get the shovel and really see how workable the soil even is up there. It's very hard and clay-like and I don't have a ton of time to do these things either because it's really, it's just today. The forecast is looking like it's supposed to rain off and on basically all week. There might be a day, I think either Thursday or Friday, without a chance of rain, but that's not useful to me because I need to be editing these videos by Thursday or Friday. So anything outdoors, I got to do it right now. Very cute and distracting. Oh, hold on though. I also just remembered that I had promised a houseplant tour, tour of the growth space when I did the garden tour and then I had a different video that had to come out. I'll go ahead and insert that. We'll just do that right now. I'll film it later, but do it right now. Do the houseplant and tropical plant tour and then come back out here and get some work done. It actually feels pretty good to be out here. It's been a minute, hasn't it? Because I've been doing so much outdoors. I haven't really seen what's been going on with the plants. If some of them aren't looking too hot, but they're the same ones that weren't looking too hot a few weeks ago. So not much to update with that. The water, I should, is that coming through the audio probably just absolutely horribly? I'm gonna turn that off. A little makeshift waterfall there. It's very pleasant in person, but when you're listening to it through headphones or through a speaker, definitely not that nice, not very relaxing or tranquil. So I don't even know where to begin. I suppose should go ahead and just give a rundown for people who are new here. I'm in my garage. This is my grow space where I overwinter my tropicals during the fall and winter time. In the past, this area has been like this little, see there's like a line here then over there, this sort of L shape. I used to wrap this in plastic to help hold in the heat and the humidity. And then I would use up to three different space heaters to keep the space warm. But this winter I upgraded, got a nice big industrial size heater and that is keeping things nice and toasty. So no need for the plastic, which is very, very, very nice. Have the pond here. This helps keep the humidity up. I use this water to water the plants. There are some fish in here, though that wasn't intentional. I think they came in with some plants that were in the outside pond. So I don't use it for fertilizing or anything anymore because the the fish don't want to dump fertilizer and whatnot in there. And the uh, waterfall, that was largely because one, I just, I wanted a waterfall out here. I like the sound of the moving water. It's calming and relaxing, but also it has really just bumped the humidity way, way, way up. I think right now, let me look. The humidity right now is at 69.9 and the temperature is at 78.1. And it's probably actually a smidge warmer than that because I had that heater running full blast before I started filming since I knew I was going to have to turn it off because it's very noisy. The humidity is actually kind of low. Everything worked out very well with having this 
heater put it. I was concerned that it was really going to dry the air out because just the regular space heaters really, really, really dried the air out. But the only spot it could go is where I just showed you. That was the only spot on the wall with, that it would work. And it hits right on top of the water and that alone helped a lot with the humidity. And then I put the waterfall in there and it's like, it's very humid. Right now things are just a smidge on the dry side. It's normally like 75 to 85% humidity in here. Right after I water for about 24 hours, it's like closer closer up to 100. So that's why things are drier in here. It's harder to film when the humidity is really high in here because the condensation and everything. And after I water, there's like actually almost a fog in the room. It's uh, probably overkill and unnecessary, but it's working out very, very, very nicely. I don't have to water the plants anywhere near as often as I was thinking I would have to. Still watering them a good amount though, because it's warm in here. 78's not too bad. That's on the cooler side. But when I first had that heater installed, I was keeping things more around like, oh, 84, 85. It took a while to kind of figure out the rhythm of what it needed to be set at versus what the actual temperature would be because the thermostat on it is just kind of meh. It's not that great. I just realized I don't have all the lights turned on. Hey, Mr. Freckles, y'all haven't seen Mr. Freckles much this winter. Been keeping this one over by the door just because it's such a sturdy plant. It didn't really need to be over on the shelves taking up any space. Already getting distracted. As I was saying, it's watering day. There's going to be some plants that look kind of dry. Probably going to see some yellow leaves, probably some mealybugs. I don't like to glorify things and just make everything look perfect for the plant tours. I pretty much just like to show it to you how it is. So far, everything has been doing well out here this winter, fall, winter. Now we're into early spring. There are only two plants that I have concern about and then one that I'm pretty sure is just, I think it's just dead. So I guess we'll start with that one. We'll go with the dead one. That would be, or I think the dead one, the Australian tree fern back here. Also, some of these shots are going to be somewhat difficult to get because there's a big body of water between me and the plants. That tree fern, I, I left it out into some cold. I think it got down like, it was between 29 and 32. Whatever it was, Fahrenheit, I was thinking it would be okay because I see all these people, all y'all out there in the UK, you grow them and it dips into the upper 20s and lower 30s Fahrenheit out there, doesn't it? And they, they're doing fine, but it, 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 didn't, it didn't do okay. So that was a bad decision. Should not have done that. It's not rebounding yet. And if it hasn't started to, it's probably not going to. So learned a lesson there. Right in front of that, this twig, that is a Heliconia rostrata. It's just not doing much. I had a, an incident back in November where the garage door got left open and temperatures plummeted in here. This is before that new heater was installed and I lost the majority of my Heliconias, but the Rostrata, it's, it's not looking great, but it's still alive. It's still ticking, so that's good. It's, I think once that gets outside and it can get more airflow, more natural sunlight, it'll probably take off and be just fine. They're a pretty tough Heliconia. Speaking of Rostratas, the Yucca Rostrata, this is sitting here just, I, I, I don't really know what's wrong with it. I was thinking maybe root rot, but I've been checking the soil. There's no odd odors or anything like that. And I'm just, I've been so hesitant to water it heavily that it's not bouncing back up. So this was over in the darker side because normally with my Yuccas, I'll let them stay on the darker side of the garage because they don't have to be in here as long. Once I know the nighttime temperatures are above like 20, I usually push them back out. But with this one looking like this, I didn't want to do that. I thought I'd move it over here to the light and see if it would perk back up, but it really hasn't. It's just kind of looking sad. So I might go ahead and just move it out. I'm going to wait till next week though, because we're going to have some much nicer temperatures next week and harden it off out there. And that way it has more airflow and I won't be as paranoid about overwatering the plant. And then what was the third one? Oh yeah, this Pharaoh's mask, Colocasia. It just, it didn't look good. I, it was doing fine, and then it just started throwing a fit. The other one back there is doing okay. See it? That one got repotted in a video back in, I think, September. It doesn't look fantastic, but they tend to not look so great when you have them inside during the winter time. So with this one, I'm thinking I might actually move this over to my table where there's more intense light. It'll be closer to the water because they're a very thirsty plant. So maybe it's just not getting enough water up here. The soil feels moist even though it's watering day and the plants that's cold damage, but it's rebounding. It's okay over here. Everything else up here seems okay. So I don't, I don't know. Plants never fail to throw us some curve balls. It should be okay. Cause all these plants will be outside in about, I'd say as early as three weeks and as late as 
six weeks. They'll be outside, and there will also be a much better look at them when I move them outside, so the May garden tour will be able to see everything when it's not all clustered together. When they're outside, they'll be looking a lot better. This shelf here, overall, I'm absolutely loving how it came out. This year, I switched from the tables. I had tables on each side stacked up as my makeshift shelves. I upgraded this year and did the wire shelf on this side with the, uh, I think these are from Hydro Builders, Botten Care. These are two foot by four foot rack trays with four inch drains built into them. I didn't install the drains, I just drilled some tiny holes in them so the water could slowly go from one level to the other. That way when they get watered, they get a slight soak, but not a heavy soak. And that's been working well for them. I already went off track. So I like the shelf. I think it looks nice. I'm able to put more plants on there. I really like them, especially with these trays in them. And next year, I'm definitely going to be upgrading this side as well with an 84 inch instead of a 72 inch. So the height will be about the same over here. I don't think I could possibly go through every single plant that's out here. So there will be some spots where it's just a broad sweep. The top shelf over here have an Acuminata banana that could use some pruning have a begonia over there. There is a black coral color Kezia back there. And then the Pharaoh's mask next to it and behind it that you can't even really see is the black varnish pseudoranthemum. Lickety split philodendron in the front. Got that a few years ago and it's been doing well. That definitely needs a repot. I have several plants out here that are going to be getting some repots and some upgrades this year. One of three silver tree ferns up here. It's just doing great. Love and life. I got three of them from Hertz, the Hertz plant hall that was oh, a couple months ago. And I set them all up in three different ways. So this one's over here, not getting as much light just in its regular pot. And then I have one down here on this shelf that I put in a self-watering pot. It's also doing well. And then there's one other that is just back over, shoved over with the other plants. This one right here, which doesn't look as good, but that's because a bunch of soil got knocked out of the pot. I didn't realize it, so it was drying out very quickly, and I was like, why do I have to water this plant constantly? And then I picked it up when it was over there on the shelves, and I'm like, oh, well, that would explain why I'm missing half of your soil. So I gave it more soil and put it over here where things are definitely more humid. I mean, the air's... I have four different fans in here, so the air's fairly well distributed, but there's a splatter zone, as you saw from that water that comes over there. So I just thought this would be a better spot for anything that could use some extra hydration. And down here on the second shelf, have the Calatheas back here that were in that Hertz Hall as well. And they're all doing very well. I put them in self-watering containers and they've been pretty low maintenance. I do need to come in here and do some more trimming and cleaning up from the inside on the Yellow Fusion, but they've put on a good amount of growth. I would say this one right here is probably doubled in size. Same with the one in the back and the Rattlesnake as well. Lots of size on it. Still in love with the variegation on the yellow fusion. It may look pretty yellow on camera. It's like a lime green. I really like it. I'm into it. Some orchids in the back. <laughs> Pink princess philodendron that I've never cared much for. So it's kind of always gotten the short end of the stick back there. I'll make sure to do something else with that this year and get it into a soil that it likes better. But it's done a good amount of growing. The heliconias, these were all potted up again a couple months ago in a video. All of them are growing and seemingly happy, except for these two right here, which were the heliconia sidercorums. These are the flamingos, which really sucks. These are the ones I was kind of the most excited about out of all of these, but nothing. There's still life in them. Like this shoot right here still has growth in it. This one, I'm not so sure about. Everything else is fine. I'm just going to consider that a one-off and uh, try again. I'm going to keep watering them and just seeing if they decide to come to life. But with it being in the 80s and the high humidity and pretty good light over here, I mean, things are flowering and growth isn't very elongated or anything like that. And all the others are growing. And look at this one back here. Lots of growth out of that one. So it's like, well, what's your problem? Stop being a jerk. Now, I suppose those are just a variety that doesn't do as well. I don't know. Like I said, if nothing happens with those, I will try again. Have some pothos cuttings here again from a video not too terribly long ago. I already have some new growth coming out of those. It's only been a few weeks. So they seem pretty happy. This leaf might need to go here fairly soon. That's not a big deal. It's fairly normal with cuttings. Oh, the variegation on these. It's the variegation plus these cupped leaves. It's a very pretty plant. Tiny little bananas hanging on, doing fine. Have the palea fern also still just trudging along. A anthurium back here that I thought wasn't getting enough light, but now that I look closer at the flowers, I'd say it's it's fine. There's more than enough light there for it. it has another one back there getting ready to open. Isn't that exciting? Oh, look at the fuchsia. 
This is a Gartenmeister fuchsia that's, oh, come on. Well, it's just gonna be hard to get a shot of, but it's growing very, very, very well. It's been flowering pretty much all winter, but it's gone especially nuts with the flowers over the last few weeks. I'm glad I brought that inside. I wasn't going to, because you know, I got it as an annual, but I was like, well, I may as well bring it in, see how it does. not It's been fantastic and easy. Anything that you can bring inside and we'll just keep flowering and not have to worry about it, we'll bring in to this warm garage. I don't know about in the house. I know plenty of people overwinter them inside and say they're fantastic. That's why I thought I'd give it a try. And been doing well. I have an F. Halandra down here. Squarosa. It's supposed to be a variety that's called like Snow Queen, something like that. This showed up from, uh, oh, I actually don't even remember who I ordered this from. There's a shipping delay. It was cold outside and basically I thought it was dead. But I held on to it just in case and it eventually put out some new growth. But that's it doesn't look like the Snow Queen or Snow whatever variety that it's supposed to be, but that's okay. Still great plants. The variegated Alocasia macroriza back here, macroriza, variegated Alocasia back here that's getting a repot and thurium in the front. Little bit of dryness on it because I'm a little bit behind on this week's watering, but it's okay. So it has tons of growth coming out. That was the other plant that I thought was going to die when I lost the Heliconias with that cold snap that happened in here. And it lost all of its foliage, but I put a dome over it and went ahead and put out some new growth. So it turned out to be nice and sturdy. Silver dragons back here, they're waking up. Look at how cute, these tiny little silvery leaves. Love those plants. Another variegated alocasia here. This is the Okinawa silver. Love the foliage on this one. Very, very, very pretty, isn't it? Just gorgeous. When this leaf opened up, I was not expecting it to last very long, but it's been like a good month or so. Still there, still looking fine. This one is stretching towards the lights. I'd be concerned about it, but it's gonna be outside in a few weeks and it's been growing just fine as it is. So yeah, I'm sure it's okay. And then the bottom shelf have a neon pothos over here. All the cuttings that were done in a video, I don't know, a while ago. The same one that I did with the other pothos. Also some oregano seedlings still in there. They're doing okay. Something got in here and it was digging in the plants for a while. I don't know if it was a chipmunk or a mouse but I haven't seen a, any damage in a couple of weeks, but something came in here and dug these up like two days after I brought them inside. And then again, about a week later, but haven't seen them since. I'm starting to see some growth out of those Tritoscantias. So they're responding well to that repot. Here's a plant that I don't think there's been any updates on ever. This is the Croton Terra, or Tamra. Yeah, Croton Tamra. Got that last year, it was just a little twig. Gave it a repot and it's starting to respond and do some growing. The Hilo Beauty, I'm going to call it Caladium over here. It was doing great. And I'm going to say that it still is, but it's too close to these lights. So there are a few plants down here on the shelf that I need to move. And that's going to be this Hilo Beauty because they put up their leaves and they go up here towards the light and then they scorch and burn down. I see it's happy. It keeps putting out new growth, but I think the light's just too much for it. So I need to move that. And then the same thing with these begonias back here which I believe are Begonia Whimsies. These got repotted and cut back in a video not too terribly long ago, a few months ago. And they are very full, very bushy, and big enough now that I need to move them to a different shelf because there's not enough space there under that light. Tomato seedlings starting to flower. So those are gonna have some cute little tomatoes on them and not too terribly long. What is this? Okay, it's just dust. Don't you hate that when you see dust on your plant and you go, oh no. Oh no, not spider mites. It's not, it's just dust. This is that Nicholas diamond fern from the Hertz Hall that I told you I was like, I'm not gonna baby it because they said it was going to be sturdy. And it seems fairly sturdy. I don't, gotta be honest, I'm not really blown away with that plant. Not one of my favorites. Syngonium neon robusta, something like that. It's, it's a syngonium. It's doing okay. I did some quick rearranging. Oh crap, hold on, waterfall turned back on. Let's try that again. Since I was over here and talking about it, I went ahead and did some rearranging. I pulled the silver dragon that was up here and moved it down lower because this shelf does dry smidge faster than the others and it doesn't need to be sopping wet. It was pretty wet. Moved the caladium up here so it has some more space underneath those lights. And then the begonias that were down here, I moved up here to the shelf with the artichoke seedlings. They're not looking super hot, but let's, let's focus on what's looking great. Look at these. Remember what these looked like when I repotted them? They were just sticks. They're knocking on death's door. Now they're flourishing. So full and bushy and big. These are gonna be fun this year. Begonias have traditionally always done well for me on the shelf over here, so I think that they'll be happy there. The artichoke seedlings, 
So I repotted these, or I potted them up from the little cells that they were in, you know, where I started them, and uh, moved them in here, and the next day or a few days later, one of the lights broke. So I had them angled in here for a while to try and get them enough light, and as of this morning, the broken light started working. I wasn't going to replace it. We're too close to the end of the year having plants in here. It's like, no, I'm not, not doing that. So, but it, it came back on. I don't know what that's about, but they should start perking up now if they're getting more light. And these will be outside pretty soon. So I'm not worried about that anyways and be hardening them off. In the next few weeks, the top shelf with the succulents, my arms are way up in the air. Oh, there they are. They're doing well. One of them dried up and got kind of crispy. The airflow is pretty intense and this is going to be the warmer area because it's up higher. Even with the fans and everything, there's still some pockets where there's not quite as much airflow, and that's why the succulents are over there. Because I figured if any of the plants can take it, it would be the succulents. Now the bottom shelf, oh, there's a lot here. Philodendrum gigantium, variegata. It's done okay. Not okay, it's actually, it's done really well. It's put out a good amount of growth this year. Seems happy so far. There's a justicia in here that doesn't want to focus, but it's flowering. You get the idea, it's pretty. Love and Life Variegated Aloe, one of my favorite aloes that I have. Don't know what it's actually called, but it's just, it's very pretty. It's a very nice, creamy, soft variegation, a soft white. Package Jackie's Ludia threw a fit a few weeks ago, and I don't really know why. Oh, I think it may have to do with some temperature experimentation I was doing, but it's, it's bouncing back. It's fine. Those are tough plants. It had defoliated, which is normal for them to do that when you bring them inside, and then usually I let it rest for a while, and it pops back up and that's enough we've, we've talked about that enough it's gonna be two hours if i go into depth on everything out here coconut orchid it just finished flowering it flowered for probably a good month this thing was just full of flowers and it smelled heavenly love the smell from that plant it seems happy there's a hibiscus back here that again just like those begonias needed a repot several weeks ago it was just a bunch of twigs looks terrible i repotted it cut it back and Looking good. About one flower about a week ago, so it's it's on the rise. It's doing okay. Have some more of those Okinawa silver alokijas down here. This divisions I took from the mother plant. Such a pretty plant. There's another. I had two of those of the bigger ones. This one's reverted. I can give that a cut back. I probably should actually, just because it's shading one of the others. Variegated or not, I still love it. I think this could use a repot too, though, because look. Needs some nitrogen, and it's really, truth be told, this one's been in the same container for probably three, whenever I did the video on these, which I think was three or four years ago, it's been in this pot, so I, yeah, that's, that's why those leaves look like that. That's bad. I was bad. I was a bad plant dad. Then Elastica here, this is the Taniki, I believe, also getting a repot. I have these little flags that I got to keep my dog from running around the garden. I haven't set them up yet. I think I'm gonna, going to come out here and stick those flags in the pot of everything that I want to repot when I move the plants outside this spring, later spring, when it's warmer outside. That way I can just remember, because I have a list, but you know, I tend to not always go back or remember to add everything to the list. But if there's a bright pink flag and everything needs to be repotted, then I just know until all the flags are gone, I'm not done repotting. So that's probably what I'm going to do with those. Variegated bird's nest fern, looking good. Got a repot, I don't know, a month ago, maybe two. This pretty blue pot down here. It's been pretty happy. I've actually had some trouble keeping this one hydrated. So it could possibly need to go into a mix that can hold on to some more moisture, which is surprising because these tend to be okay if you let them dry out. I prefer to not. They grow better with high humidity and a good amount of moisture, but they don't have to have it. But for optimum growth, they do better with that. And I would prefer for it to have those conditions. And this soil is just bone dry. And I just watered this like two days ago. So I'm going to have to pull it out and add some compost or something to it here when I move it outside. Geranium, that is just, it's just a geranium I brought inside because I thought it was a pretty one and I wanted to see how it would overwinter. Not going to be able to get the best shot of how pretty it is because, well, it, it looks like this. I originally had this on the shelf above where it's closer to the light and the leaves were teeny tiny, somewhat scorched. So I moved it down here and it's still flowering and the leaves are coming out larger and healthier, so I think it appreciated being moved. Okay, that's enough of the shelves. Let's move on to the big plants. The Eureka Palm, been doing great this year. Lots of growth, very lush, very full. Normally this palm tree just ends up infested with mealybugs, like no matter what I do, believe me, I have tried everything you can think of, I have tried. From all the home remedies, like rice water, 
So name two more harsh chemicals, which I know you'll be mad about, but when you're dealing with an infestation, eventually you go, okay, that's enough. It's, I don't know, some kind of super strain. This year, I hadn't seen any mealybugs. There are some on the newer growth inside of the plant. Luckily, it's only a few weeks till this goes outside. When these go outside, it's so much easier to spray them. I'm still going to spray probably, I would say tomorrow morning. I'll do a light spray when I'm done filming here. Whenever I get around to watering, I'll do the spray afterwards. I'm just going to use an insecticidal soap or neem while they're inside. When they go outside, I can lay the plant on its side and get underneath all the foliage and it's, it's much easier to spray when they're outside. It's not too far away from that though, right? Hopefully just a few weeks and this will be outdoors. Aside from the few mealybugs I've been seeing on there that I've mostly just been squishing by hand, it's good. Has some drier foliage that needs to be pruned out. I believe those fronds started drying up and looking sad right around the time we had a really, really harsh cold snap and the heater was running like constantly. So I think that that was just dry air, but otherwise it's looking good. Done a lot of growing. So is this Reflexum down here, this Dracaena which normally I've always kept in my house, but this year I went ahead and brought it outside to keep in the grow space and it's just love and life. A little bit bare on the inside. It's hard to get light down in there, but it has all kinds of new growth coming out on it. So it seems to be happy, nice low maintenance plant. I hadn't kept this out here in years past because this particular type of Dracaena, I have noticed they just rot. Temperatures aren't warm and there's much water down there in the soil. They're very prone to root rot. So it was just easier in the house because in the winter, the air in the house is very dry from the heater and everything running. But since you know, I knew I was doing the heater and it was warmer out here, I thought I'd give it a try and doing great. Seems to be loving life. Lots of new growth. It doesn't want to focus. The hibiscus down below. No flowers on it right now, but it's happy putting out new growth. Another Dracaena over here. This one is the Colorama, I believe. This got repotted in a video last fall. It's done a lot of growing since then too. Crown was right around here and it's all the way up here now. Power palm could use some pruning, but otherwise looking good. Another Dracaena over here. This is Limelight. I can never remember. It's one of the Derebensis types, one of the Janet Craig's, a very popular variety. You may remember this one got sun scorched last fall and that's where that growth was and here's the new growth up top on both of those growth so i can get that stuff cut out when i get it moved outside or maybe even sooner might do that right away actually so it bounced back from that just fine another dracini here that got repotted when these other ones did it's that's actually it's really doing well lots of new growth on that one lovely ripsalis here and over here have my string of hearts right here right here that's not going to want to focus is it Caropegia, common plant, moving so much that it doesn't want to focus. It's fine, trailing very far down there. The chlorophytum up there that I mostly just grow to feed to the iguana and the tortoise. They enjoy munching on it. Thanksgiving cactus. Look at the more succulents just looking good, loving life. There's some bare spots on the inside of this one. Not surprising. I am so cautious with watering it that sometimes I think I, I might just wait a little bit too long and then it dries out. Medicium flaming, no, 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 no. Tahitian flame waking up, ready to go outside and see the sun. Love when they start doing that, so that's another sign that they're happy and they're ready to go outside. Oh, my battery's almost dead. Uh-oh. Variegated hibiscus. Did a video on this one. It's been doing well out here. It hasn't done a lot of growing, but it's put out some growth and it's gotten a little bit taller. It's much easier to keep inside than I thought it was going to be. Much, much, much easier. Isn't that a gorgeous plant? I love the leaves on that. There's a back shot of the Prince of Orange philodendron and the crotonin. I think we need to walk around. Things are getting blocked now. Oh, Bismarck palm. Well, not much to say. It defoliated, it got a cold snap and was looking sad, but it put out a new leaf and has another one that's starting to open up right there in the middle. I also see some passion flowers and some dormant plants that are starting to wake up too. A uh, plumeria tree decided to wake up not too long ago. It seems happy. I have another ficus down here and the philodendron somatophile and bipinatifidum. Doing fine, needs a repot. Not a lot to say about these ones. Oh, before going over to the other side, there are a few things I forgot to mention, pardon the noisy filter in the background, it's making some odd noises. Have the variegated basket grass in here with the Eureka palm. It started to die off in the middle, but it has started to come back from the tips. And better, I hadn't tried to overwinter these in another container, all I ever remember from trying to overwinter them is that they are very thirsty, and if you overwater them, they just die. So while I'm not thrilled about all the dead stuff in the middle, pretty happy it's still going, and pretty easy to propagate too, right? So I can take cuttings from those and get some newer plants going this spring that'll look better. Oh no, 
poor eye for a poor pyro for fireworks plant. It's kind of hard to see because the fish tank's in the way. But it's been flowering and growing, gotten nice and thick and full and lush. I was a little bit concerned maybe it wouldn't get enough light with the tank being here, but so far so good. Oh, and the tank. H here it is. Not much to say, everything's fine. Plants are growing, had some hair algae, but managed to take care of that with some Seachem Flourish. Potted plants still need to be planted up. They're just hanging out, waiting for the tannins to finish leaching out of their drift with those going to mount most of those on, not all of them, but most of them. I've had to pull this water lettuce out of here like by the handful every few days. It's, it's a bit much. It's shading some of the plants, so that may have to go. I don't know. I really like having the roots in there though, and it makes a nice place for the guppy babies to hang out. I'm going to think on that. This tank is temporary. It's not always out here. This is just because it's going in a room that I'm currently remodeling. And when that room's on being remodeled, the tank's going to, it's going to go up there. That's what's going on down there. Water parameters and everything else seems good in there. The fish seem happy. The metanilla, which is one of my favorite plants out here, but also one of the hardest ones to get a shot of because of where I have it sitting. It seems to like the spot though. It is, it has a giant flower on it. That's so hard to get on camera. It has another bud coming out. It has flowered all winter long. It has some new growth that came out kind of crispy when I was still learning how to really get that heater working properly, but everything else that's been going on with it has been okay. Seemingly a happy plant. What else? Oh, the Dracaena Draco. <laughs> Very hard to see. Do some cleanup in there, but that's not unusual. Had this Monstera Edinsoni, some kind of freakish Edinsoni, and it has just been so happy look at all those flowers it's been flowering for about two or three weeks now just your typical aeroid flower but it's always nice seeing them do that right because you know that it means that they're happy they're loving life this one always throws a fit when i move it inside get some yellowing on it drop some leaves but it bounces back so quickly and easily this is one of my lowest maintenance plants out here this and the thai talk about that some more in a minute it has growths like everywhere i've had to go through around this corner where they've been creeping under my desk and cut it back a few times you can see it has some growth i don't know if you can see it or not but going all the way back through around there just chilling and doing its thing cebu blue epiprenum that that there's just not much to say here it is still have it still growing still fine and the croton which is another plant that's hard to get a shot of it's not much to say it's been growing it did a lot of flowering the growth the new growth that's coming out of it's coming out large and green, which means that the light's not as intense as it was last year. I was thinking about that, and I do think that I had this more over, more directly underneath this grow light last year. So uh, it, thing, it doesn't matter. So when it goes outside, it's going to throw a fit and need to be re-hardened off and acclimated into bright sunlight anyways. I'm like, whatever, you're growing. Seems fine. That's getting a repot, though. It's in a 15-gallon container, and it definitely needs to be bumped up. Have a new leaf. Down here on the tie from a new lower growth that started popping up on this plant last fall, and then it just opened up this one back here. I think it actually still has some expansion to do, just a little bit. It is massive though. It's the size of this, I can't even get far enough back. Huge, huge, huge leaf. As I was saying, one of my easier plants. Love the deliciosas. Mm -hmm, just beautiful. I love the holes and the fenestrations, like, variegated or not. They're just fun, fantastic plants. Such low maintenance, just happy, happy plants. Also a plant that's caused quite a bit of stir this week on social media, Costa Farms. Oof, ooh. Did y'all hear about that? Costa Farms sold off some of their mother plants for 600 bucks. The Trio Stars, these all got repotted and put onto self-watering cord and put into this pond a few months ago, and they are just loving life. I was concerned about there being too much hot air hitting them from the heater because there was some browning on the tips. It didn't get any worse, so I think that those tips had probably already been there. However, the water's been splattering on some of the foliage, so I need to come in and cut that off and adjust the, uh, the hose there so water's not splattering on them. But otherwise... They're doing great. Lots of new growth out of them, like enough to the point where you can barely see the soil anymore. And before you could see right through some of these because a couple of them, or just one of them, I think I had divided up. So there wasn't much in the pot, but there they are. Nice and full. Is that everything? Are we done yet? No, no, no. Canary wing begonia right there. And then the Gloriosum. 
philodendron. This one, two, three, four, five, six, I think seven, six or seven growths on it. Rebounded nicely from being just the stick that it was and it is ready to go into a larger container. But I'm still gonna wait until I take it outside because it's just, it's so much easier to repot plants outdoors. It's less messy. I'm gonna get into something nice and long so it can crawl and trail and fill out its planter. Okay, are y'all sick of me yet? <laughs> Let's go outside. I did some fun stuff outside. It, was that good? Did you get to enjoy seeing the tropicals and the house plants for a while? That was necessary, really, because I haven't done a ton in the growth space over the last couple of weeks. So thanks for hanging on while I'm doing the stuff outside and not really messing with the tropicals. I do appreciate that. Thank y'all for your patience. That time of year we're starting to clean up, set the stage for bringing the plants outside and you know, just it's a garden stuff, springtime. Gotta get things done. In this spot, I'm just kind of looking at it going, where do I even start? So much clutter and debris from the winter time has gotten trapped down there. I guess just need to <laughs> first clear an access point and then get up there on that hill and start moving things around and digging. Slide this mule palm out of the way. That doesn't need to be there right now. Really, don't even know why this is there anymore. That could use some paint. It's looking pretty bad, isn't it? I should probably move this to a spot where I won't get wet until I can get around to doing that. It's a dog bowl. It's been sitting around out here for like, I don't know, two or three years. Don't know where it came from. New Orleans, I'm not a football kind of person, so I have, oh, you know what though? This is my sister. She lived here for a while. Her dog was here and they, they're Saints fans. So that's, well, what do I do with this? Oh, the puppy pens. Don't need those out here anymore either. Oh, why I have so many of these. Whew, okay, probably doesn't look like much has happened over here, but it has. I had to cut a bunch of the footage out. I was up there on the hill digging and I didn't think to really move the tripod up higher and over. So it was just, it was a lot of crotch. All I did was dig holes. I don't think the juice is worth the squeeze there. Not at all. So what I've been doing since then is just pulling out pottery, moved all the akubas. Just, I need to get all this stuff off of here so I can get it with a blower and get all this junk that's falling on the pine trees out of here. Such messy, 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 messy trees. Also, this may come as a disappointment to some people. I don't know, I think the majority of y'all probably don't even care. Uh, I've been thinking about it like all winter long. This thing, it's gotta go. I'm done with it. It doesn't get enough light for the plants that are in there to really grow and do much. The fish were all eaten by the frogs last year. I did order a net to put over the top to prevent that from happening this year, but just the more I think about it, it's like it just, it's not serving a purpose really. So why have it out here? It's an eyesore. I love my ponds and my aquatic plants and everything. The plants that were in there, I'll still keep. I'll just put them in something that doesn't drain so that they can stay moist and keep going. But as far as having like the pool pond thing out here, goes I don't, I don't I don't want it it's ugly it's an eyesore I wrap it in the bamboo reed stuff every year and then it just falls apart in the winter and you got to do it again and eh. overall I think it would just look a lot nicer if that were not here now I'm not saying in the future perhaps even this summer I'm not going to set up something somewhere else that maybe looks better and where there will be more light for those plants but as far as this setup is concerned uh nope done with it had a great time with it over the years but the trees did what they did and they grew and now there's not really any sun on it so it's just a thing that's taking up space and catching debris and why why hold on to it right I'm, well i shouldn't say hold on. i'm not gonna throw it away just in case so these things are kind of pricey so i'm gonna flip it over clean it out and, and that folds up into just a little container and i'll probably toss it up in the attic and maybe someday i'll have a use for it but right now nah i guess all i need to do at this point is just finish pulling the stuff out of here and get the blower turned on and get all that out of there i tested the soil up there with the shovel pretty good i think we're gonna be good to go there as far as getting a hedge I guess maybe I don't know if we can call it a hedge but getting some shrubs put up there first I'd like to handle all this junk such a mess So much better. I know it's still messy. There are things here that I just can't handle right now as far as the 
like crusted on stuff. Need to wait for the power washer to get back and then this way things have mounted up here from the soil spilling down and washing out from the pots, I'll have to come in with a shovel and probably remove a lot of that gravel and replace it. This is all supposed to be open for drainage, but I, right now I just wanted the junk out of the way so that I can get, well, it just, it seemed like the right thing to do. So there's still drip emitters and cords and things everywhere, but I've got a spot opened up to get the shrubs planted. This is a broken pot. I think that explains itself. Need to glue it back together. That's the end of that story. Now let's go down and have a look at the, mm, I should take my shovel. Okay, and go look at the shrubs that I'm planning on pulling up to move over and stick in that area. There they are. You want to miss. Nothing crazy special. I planted these here several years ago as just little twigs when I used to actually have bananas and crepe myrtles on this berm. That was just something I did under the assumption that someday the maple tree would grow and those bananas would stop growing, and they did. It was too dark for them, and uh, now they're much larger. And they've done a good amount of growing, but they need to be moved. These can't really stay here anymore. They're starting to press into those laurels. You don't want that end up with bare spots and dead spots in that hedge. And I figure since I have them and I need to move them, may as well stick them up there on the hill. I'm trying to miss one of those plants where people have some pretty strong opinions about them. They're easy to grow, they're evergreen. Yeah, they revert. The ground cover kind can be uh, tricky, right? They can be pretty invasive and hard to control. I like them, whether they're variegated or green, doesn't matter to me. They're still pretty evergreen shrubs. I figure why not utilize that and go ahead and create the shield I've always wanted in that spot. This is the time to do it, right? It's spring, it's supposed to rain off and on all week. May as well get them dug up and relocated and then hopefully all that rain, that off and on rain will help get them hydrated and established. It's gonna take more than a week to assume. You get what I'm saying. I think I'm gonna leave this one. It's because there's already a gap here and this one's kind of crummy looking from Turbo and Cousin Louie running through it and <laughs> breaking it to pieces. Right, see, you can't even see them from over here. So there's, there's just no reason for them to be over here anymore. I would rather have them down there. You gonna go swimming? He has been such a helper. And by a helper, I mean huge, huge pain in the butt. You having fun doing your swimmies? Having fun doing your swimmies? I know the bottom's dirty. That takes a few weeks to clear up. You have to go in and brush the stuff up and like you scoot it down towards the pump and it takes a while, but everything's up and running at least. Uh, cannot wait to get that power washer. Okay, it's gonna start digging. Those dug up fairly easy. That's a bad angle. They came up fairly easily. With the transplanting any type of shrub, I try and go out from where the drip line is. So that's the outermost branch straight down and try and go out a few inches. The way it usually goes is that there's other roots or things around and then when you lift the plant up, you lose a bunch of soil. So it's just, it's fine. I'm gonna keep them hydrated and I will try, I don't have any starter fertilizer. The ground up here is pretty rich, like very rich. A lot of the soil that I was pulling up when I was working in here was just full of mycelium and it looked nice and healthy. So they should root in just fine. I have some Espoma potting mix that has the mycotone in it, which is just the stuff that's in the biotone starter. So like, I don't know, maybe I'll work a couple of handfuls of that into the ground when I pop them in here, but I don't know. I don't, I don't really think it's necessary. But what is necessary is getting these in the ground right away, because those root balls were surprisingly dry, considering how much rain we had last week, and that I have the drip running on that berm. They, they're not that moist. I would prefer things to be very well hydrated when I transplant. Go ahead, get these planted. I can't, I'm so excited. I know I talk about being excited a lot. It's because I'm doing things this season that I've wanted to do for such a long time. And I have wanted this area filled in for years. So I guess the sooner I stop talking, the faster I can make that happen. We'll be right back and there will be bushes here. Ugh. Look at it. Finally, all these years, got something growing up here on this hill. I did try my best to space them out evenly, but they're all shaped kind of wonky. So it just, it is what it is. I don't even care. I just wanted something up here. They don't have to be beautiful, perfect shrubs that always have a nice habit to them. I just wanted some evergreens and this is perfect. Didn't have to pay for them. I guess I did a few years ago, but they were like $8.99, $9.99 a pop. So like I said, they were just little twigs. I think these are going to be much, much happier in this location too. I mean, you saw them, they weren't doing terribly down there, but the laurels were pressed against them. They, these were pressed against the laurels. So that's not good for either one of them. And the sunlight over there, about, I don't know, probably late April through December is just awful. There's none, it's just shade. 
back over there because the oak tree and the maple tree flush out so they're going to get a good amount of morning sun here it'll be filtered because they're underneath these trees and you can see they also are going to get late afternoon sun which i think they'll appreciate you miss, they tend to like the sun although you gotta admit considering how much shade they were getting looking pretty good right <laughs> they're so uneven just like their character their growth habits are uneven that might get better with some more light coming in but would be more true if i had put these two over here where there's more it doesn't matter not that concerned. I wanted the biggest ones right here because that's where the view bothers me the most. I don't really plan on keeping these like pruned and trimmed into a nice looking hedge. I just want them to fill out. I could prune them and do some things with them in the future, but this year I'm just going to leave them alone. They might get a small cut back just to help encourage root growth if it looks like they're struggling. Such a good feeling to get those in the ground because I knew that I needed to move them and uh, it just made sense to put them here. It seems like the perfect spot because I can't put anything that's going to get very big because there's a canopy up there. These Euonymus, the Ario marginatas, which is the yellow outline variegated ones, generally like six to eight feet tall. That's about as big as I've seen them where I live in St. Louis. And even still, I feel like it's not that often that I see these over about four and a half to five feet. And it's probably partially a winter damage thing. They need prunes and cutbacks every so often. We have a really bad winter and they get burnt up. So there's, there's that to keep in mind. I just want them to get to be about the height of the fence. So this is perfect. You know, I love those Skywalker boxwoods and I love the skip whorls, but those get pretty big. <laughs> that wouldn't have worked out very well in this spot. Would have looked beautiful. Skip whorls would have been gorgeous here, but this is good and free. <laughs> That's the big thing. Free, instant gratification. And there it is with the bamboo back in place. Remember, there'll be a big potted queen palm there during the summer time. Doesn't that just even things out very nicely? I know it's hard to see, but I kind of like that. It'd be nice to have the layers there. I suppose if there was something with darker foliage, but this is good. And once that bamboo's in place, things are screened off very nicely. That'll fill in over time. Not worried about it. Whew, look at that sun. Beautiful day. I am done. This portion of the video probably maybe was brief compared to the plant tour. I don't know because you know, I haven't filmed that yet. But uh, it's just, it's been about four and a half hours of just cleaning and organizing and dealing with the pond, the pool pond. There it is. I still got to get all that stuff picked up and moved away and get the pine needles swept up and bagged up but this is the pretty stuff's done and I love it love it so much it makes me so happy I also I got lots of pine needles in that fan I'm gonna have to get those out of there I shouldn't have done that I probably shouldn't even brought this out yet this fan though love it people have asked me to talk about it and I feel like I have but maybe not it's just a new air outdoor fan I try and take it inside during the winter when I remember it's just a nice thing to have outside because it blows the mosquitoes and the bugs away it helps keep you cool too. I <laughs> wonder how many people were watching this going, uh, you just spent all that time getting those shrubs put up there, digging them up, messing with that stuff, and then you put these plants right in front of them. Yep, you can tell they're there, right? I mean, I can tell. Maybe it's just knowing that they're there makes me feel better. I don't know, but didn't have anywhere else to put them, and I want something up there, so worked out well. Oh, the fountain. That's not, I don't, I don't have it in me. <laughs> done it's not just that i before i can set the fountain up i gotta like clean and gut and dig and no done not doing it not right now we'll do it next week but i know i said last week but no that's just the way things are going i wasn't expecting to have to do a big project in one day i just just finished with last week's video just need a little bit of a break and the fountain i still need to put another layer of silicone on it so that's i could have just led with that instead of saying i don't feel like it it, there's still a tiny leak, not much, but it's just, there's a teeny tiny leak. So I need to get that glued up. I know that it has to take 24 hours of the silicone and it's going to be raining and blah, 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 blah. Nobody cares. Yeah, thanks for hanging out. I'm really happy to have this done. This is a good time for me. Hope you enjoyed watching me clean up a mess and then just create an entirely new one. Oh, all wet. He's always extra cuddly when he's all wet. What you doing? What you looking for in there, Turbo? Turbo, what you looking for? What's in there? There's nothing in there. There's nothing in there. You're all wet. You're all wet. You're all wet. Don't get back. He's always wet. Comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. How's everybody doing? Starting some transplants? No, I'm going kind of heavy with them this year. It's the nature of the beast. When your plants grow and start to shade other plants, you gotta do some shuffling and some rearranging. I just watered these. How are you so thirsty? Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.